Cascade Hoops Talk, bringing the world NAI basketball one podcast at a time. morning cascade hoops talk billy d happy saturday hey today we're really happy to have brevin slope he's going to join us to do a gpac review we're going to look at that conference top to bottom uh, obviously uh morningside and jamestown are the teams to beat right now but there's really not a weak link in this conference a couple things you always know about the gpac you know that it's going to be very competitive And you know that they're going to shoot a lot of threes. (laughs) You could take that to the bank. Also, when we talk to Brevin, I'm really fascinated with different venues throughout the NAI. So we talk about some of those. And the objective today is just give the listeners around the country a feel for the GPAC and what to expect this season. We had some slight technical problems. The sound quality isn't what I normally am able to produce. And I apologize for that. I take a lot of pride in high quality audio. We we have it squared away, but I apologize. It's a little bit lower quality than you're used to from Cascade Hoops Talk. Over the next few days, Cascade Hoops Talk will have a kind of a G-Pack feel. We have Coach uh, Colin Othier from Mount Marty. He's a new coach there. He'll be on. Also, Mark Sfigera, uh head coach there at Briarcliff. Also, putting together a show, probably be out next week, with uh, Coach P. Talk about uh, what it takes to play college basketball. So many moving parts with trying to understand scholarships and what is it that coaches look for. So that might be a good show for high school kids to listen to, uh, give them a bit of an idea. And, And Coach P, he's one of the best in the business with that. Also, I want to remind everybody we'll be going live to the uh, crossroads in indiana second week of november Uh, if you have any particular place around the warsaw area where you think we should show up uh, just shoot me a a note on twitter Uh, i'd love to get to your game or to your event also if you're in that area please try to get to uh, grace over in winona lake for their hoops for hope Uh, all the proceeds from that tournament go to directly to the uh, charity it's a great event that they do every year Uh, we're trying to get coach Moore on to talk a bit more about it but please if you're in that area there's going to be great basketball west virginia tech grace christian obviously grace college and uh, huntington so uh, get down there also cascade hoops will be there and you can meet billy d anyway so try to get to that it's for a very very good cause so Brevin's going to join us in just one moment. Hang on, and we'll do our GPAC review. Thank you to everyone for all your support of what we do at Cascade Hoops Talk. And please like and subscribe this podcast. Hang on one moment, and we'll have Brevin Slope. Cascade Hoops Talk, Billy D. Hey, here with Brevin Slope, a former Concordia Bulldog. He's a graduate assistant there with that program. How you doing, Brevin? I'm doing really well. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So today, Brevin has uh, volunteered, stepped up to uh, sit with me and do a GPAC preview. Hopefully, we can do this about once a month, see where the conference is. It's just good to have somebody from who has played in the conference and then coaches in the conference to give a little context for fans across the rest of the country to know what's going on within the GPAC. It's going to be really tough in the GPAC this year, isn't it, Brevin? No, yeah. I'm definitely excited for the, the overall competition throughout the conference. Each and every year, he said, I experienced it as a player and as a coach. I mean, every year, um, I mean, every game you got in the conference, is a, it's a dog fight. So it'll be a fun, exciting year for in the conference for sure. Well, Brevin, at the top of that preseason coaches poll, no surprise, a team that did really well last year, Morningside, they sport a new coach, but man, they're loaded. Uh, Trey Brown, and that guy does everything. He's six foot seven out of Gretna. He's a great, obviously he scores the ball, but he rebounds the ball. And Zach Imig, I think they went to school together there at Gretna. Boy, that they're a pair to fight with, or, or deal with, I should say. Yep, no, obviously, like you mentioned, Morningside um, <coughs> coming in first place to start off uh, 
the season. Um, obviously, the big, the biggest thing, obviously, like you talked about, um, Brown and Immig are obviously their two go-to guys. Obviously, both going to be fifth-year guys. Um, kind of stinks for the rest of the league. Those guys coming back. You, you wish some of those guys would graduate. But I mean, with guy with two guys like that, I mean, <clears throat> um, you're gonna be, you're gonna be tough to beat. So um, it'll be interesting to see how how Coach Miller um, the adjustments he makes. But obviously, he's gonna do a really good job with with Morningside. But um, I would definitely say, obviously, with Brown and Emig, um, they're gonna be really good again this year. So so Brevin, that's Trent Miller. So he he assisted over there. He played at Morningside, and he he was an assistant there, wasn't he, under uh, Sykes? Correct. Yep, he was using assistant there for a while, and now he's he moved to the head coach jobs. Well, they're going to start out. Morningside is definitely going to start out with a big target on their back. Uh, not only do you have Imig and Trey Brown, you know Will Potabon from Lamar's Iowa. I mean, these guys all played. Potabon started. Aiden Vanderloo, he he was a part time starter. Colin Hill, senior, he was a starter. Uh, they're, they're just really going to be loaded. Those are they're they they've got a target on their back, don't they? Definitely. I mean, they're they're kind of the they've been kind of the top team the last last few years. So I mean, they're the, they're the top team that every every everybody's gunning for. So until they get knocked off, they're gonna they're gonna stay there at the top of the conference. No, I have a question for you. You know, the G Pack plays that very distinctive style that you don't really find anywhere. Out, honestly, outside of the plains, it's that four out, one in. That's what I call it. But you yep. know where. You just yeah. get the ball inside, you draw the defense in, and somebody pops a three. But Morningside yeah. plays a they're 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 more of a big guy team. They play a little bit different style. Is that a fair read? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean it obviously helps when you got a guy like Trey Brown and then um before him, um big borchers before before yeah. Brown was there. So I mean when when you have a when you have a dominant force like those two guys, I mean, you kinda wanna play through them. So yeah, definitely play a little different style. Um wanna wanna get into the big guy, but I mean, like I said, when you have two two dominant guys like that, you gotta 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 use them. Go with the horse that brung you. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> hey, in the coaches' poll, another team rated in the top twenty-five, Jamestown. They're nineteenth in the recent poll. This is a club that has really, over the last few years, just every year get a little bit better and better and better. Obviously, they have Mason Walters. Everybody in the world knows about him. First team All American. Again, he scores a lot of points, but He's an extraordinary rebounder. He's only a sophomore. I mean, he's going to be playing until he's 30, I swear. Uh, but the issue I see, and I'm curious what you – and I've already talked to Danny Neville about this, but he they're really strong in the middle. Devin Schultz has really been giving them good backup minutes. Granted, it's two, three games. But uh, they're they're pretty good in the inside. And they've got very good guards, but they're young. If those guards – can hold up on the road, you know, in the Corn Palace and Northwestern. Uh, I think they're going to be really tough. I think guard play for them is going to be the question mark. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I mean, obviously you mentioned Big Mason Walters. Obviously he's a GPAC, GPAC player of the year last year. Um, he's he's kind of speaks for himself what he's done. Um, but, yeah, like you said, I mean, the guards around him, I mean, that'll be a big big question mark for him. The guards are talented, but like you said, they're they're young, so – that makes a big difference, but the majority of them played last year, so they have that experience going on the road, those tough, tough environment. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how those how those guys respond to that. But definitely, I mean, when you got a guy like Walters, it, it makes kind of things run the way you want it, want it to go. So yeah, fans around the country, keep an eye on these guys. Mark Chose, this guy, he's a sophomore, and he can really light it up. These guys are all from Minnesota. He's from Lake City. Cole Wolford, he's a freshman. Uh, he's from Redwood, Redwood Falls, and then Will Cordes. He's from Shakopee. Fans around the country, keep an eye on those three. Uh, you might remember Chose. Who was it? It was Faulkner, I think. He just went off. I think he hit eight threes or something. But a real streaky shooter. They've struggled a little bit. Uh, granted, again, a couple games. But uh, those guys have got to hit the three to make, uh, open it up for uh, Walters and Schultz inside. When you got a stud like Walters like that, obviously there's going to be teams collapsing on doubling him. Um, which allows the, those guards to get a lot of open looks, and if, if they can hit those threes and stuff, um, that'll make them really tough to touch to defend for sure. So Mason Walters has a nose for the ball. I talked to everybody about this. I I've never seen a guy who had obviously he's tall, obviously he's quick, obviously he can move, but the ball always seems to come to him. He's just I don't know if he reads the angles. I, I he's strong, but he just he's always where he needs to be. Always. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I think obviously, like you said, rebounding is a huge strength of his. And I mean, I I think he just has a knack for finding the ball. I mean, he, there's just some guys that, that understand where the ball is going to bounce after certain shots. I mean, long rebounds, 
long threes. Some guys understand that. It's got, it's, it's honestly just a skill that guys have, and obviously he's got it because I mean he, he's getting over 15 boards. It seems like every game, and he's a knack of finding the ball. So yeah, third in the conference is a team you might have heard of, Concordia Bulldogs, uh, in the RV in the preseason. Uh, picked third in the conference in the preseason coaches poll. You guys have pretty much all the starters coming back. The difference is um, most are juniors. Carter Kent's a junior. Wurzema is a junior. Gage Smith. Uh, you know, how do you feel about this year's club? Man, I, I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't excited. I mean, I think definitely. I mean, this is going to be my sixth year part of the part of the program as a player and a coach, and this is by far. Um, our most talented group. I mean, obviously, like you said, we return all five starters. We return our top eight scorers from last year. Um, obviously, with with Gage, Gage Smith, Carter Kent, and Justin Weir's mother, they're kind of our three three head horsemen. I mean, when you got three guys like that, both, all three guys were all conference last year. When you return a, a group like that, um, we we got a chance to do something special. So I'm really excited about it. You know, one thing you guys did last year, and I'm real curious to watch this year and see how it turns out. You guys had a huge advantage on the offensive boards. And I think when you're shooting the ball a lot, if you can grab those offensive boards, I, I thought that was a huge advantage for you guys being able to get those offensive boards. No, yeah, definitely. I mean, we have we have some really good really good athletes, and then obviously, kind of we, we talked about how Walters rebounds so well. We have a, we have a kid, Gabe Smith. Um, he's one of those he's one of those guys that just has a knack for rebounding. I mean, he's I mean he, he's he's somebody that's going to get right around ten boards a game, probably three or four offensive boards a game. I mean, he has a knack for finding the ball, um, just great reading off the rim. And obviously it helps. Like I mean, Carter's a really good athlete. Justin's a really good athlete. We got guys that that have a knack of finding the ball, and that makes a big difference with rebounding, obviously too. So the team picked fourth in the conference in the coaches' poll is Northwestern. Now Northwestern is a perennial power. The guys tell me that it's it, you know when you watch it on video, it doesn't look that intimidating. It looks kind of open. But guys I've talked to have said it's it's a tough place to play. Is Northwestern a tough place to play? I mean, you talked about it. They, they're just known, I mean, nationally for having, having, having a good program. I give Coach Corver over there a lot of props. I mean, he's done a great job with that program. And, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a tough spot to play. I mean, they, they, the student section always always seems to show out um, every game. So it makes it, makes it makes it a tough road environment for opposing teams. But, yeah, sometimes when you're watching it on film, it, it's, it's a bigger arena, so they don't always get it filled and everything. But when you have, when you have a good, um, energetic student section, that makes a big difference. And they, they, yeah. they a lot of times have that, so – yeah, that's why I wanted to ask you because it's it's really hard to get a feel on the video. You know, they're they're going to be a little bit young. I know that a lot is expected of this team, but you know, Alec Van Calsby, Van Calsby yep. yeah, Van Calsby, he's yep. only a sophomore. Of course, they have Trent, uh, Trent Hillbrands back, but they don't have a lot of. Uh, they've lost a lot of starters, I guess. Jay Small's gone. Uh, Craig Sturk's gone. You know, they're they're going to have to have some young guys step up. So you mentioned Van Calsby and. Hillbrands, I mean, those those two guys are really, really good. I mean, Hillbrands is another one of those guys that seems like he's been around forever. Obviously, he's a really good guard for him. I mean, Ben Cosby, he's a, he's a monster inside. Um, he had a heck of a year last year. And when you have two guys like that, I mean, you got you got a chance to be pretty good. So I'm sure Coach Corver will find guys to, to surround those two with, and I'm sure they'll be, they'll be really good again this year too. So, Well, they're always a disciplined team. They take care of the ball. They You know, their assist-to-turnover ratio is always good. It's not going to be any – easy mission going into Northwestern this year. Well, I tell you, the GPAC, no. uh, Brevin, is going to be tough. I hope you guys are ready. We're, we're excited. We're excited. Because, Brevin, now we're down to the team that's picked fifth by the coaches in the conference, and it's a perennial power, Dakota Wesleyan. So we're, there's no drop-off here. There's no, there's no night off. I watched them on video. They look pretty good. Obviously, Nick Harden is gone. Uh, it looks like Oppel's kind of playing point. That's where they, uh, I don't know, if they, I think they, maybe they have some injuries right now, but uh, they're a little bit thin at guard. Jeffrey Shook, he's he's really tough inside. He's undersized in the post, but, man, he's crafty and he's strong. You know, can you just talk a little bit about Dakota Wesleyan? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, obviously, um, like you said, they're, they're nationally known, have been really well, really good the last couple of years, the last de- decade. I mean, Coach Wilbur's done a really good job there. But yeah, like you said, um. I mean, they're they're. I watched I watched them the other night as well. I mean, they're 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 big, one through five. I mean, Oppel's like the smallest guy out there for him right now, and he's probably six, six four. I mean, they're they're a big team, really good on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, when you got six four, six five, six six, six six, six seven out there, I mean, that, that makes makes it tough on on teams to score. And Coach Wilbur does a really good job with their with their defensive stuff. But yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll they'll be really solid again this year as well too. So talk about you've had to do this a few times. Talk about going into the Corn Palace. 
Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, that's that's definitely probably one of the best best atmospheres um, in the GPAC, and not, if, if if not in the country, I mean, they they have great support from their community. Um, the student section is always rocking. Um, it, it's really a fun fun place to play. I mean, that's definitely the most memorable game of my career was playing there in the conference championship. The place was just crazy, and it's which makes for a fun fun playing experience. So. Yeah, you got to get jazzed up whenever you know you're going over there, because that that's got to be an experience to walk in there. Oh, definitely. I mean, it's cool when you when you pull up. It it looks like I mean, it almost looks like a castle just made out of corn. I mean, it's pretty pretty <laughs> cool when you walk when you when you walk in and just um, all all the the corn mir- mir- mirages on the on the walls and stuff. It just it's just it's a cool and it has a it has a good historic va- basketball vibe to it too. I mean, it's obviously nationally known which is which is cool so it, but you know you know when you walk in there you're gonna have a, have a special environment to play in so that's cool i know they get crazy crowds and again it's hard to tell on the on the video is it loud in there is it is are oh, yeah. the acoustics loud oh yeah i mean it's it's crazy like like i talked about my, my senior when we played them i mean that place was like i i was, i remember shooting a free throw and literally the floor was shaking it was oh, it was goodness. crazy there I mean, it, it was it was awesome but yeah it, it definitely gets loud i mean they're really passionate about their team and stuff which, which, like I said, makes it makes it fun for for the, the playing experience. But as a player, doesn't that just jazz you up getting that loud oh, crowd? And... Oh, oh de- definitely, definitely, definitely. And it's and it's really fun when you can silence them. That's for sure. <laughs> I'm sure you probably were able to do that a few times. Uh, you got a couple couple tough places to play. We're going to get to one of them in a minute. Well, here's one right here, Briarcliff. Again, now we're uh, what are we now? Down to sixth. This is the team picked sixth in the conference. Another perennial power tough every year the only person that is gone is Friedel they've got everybody back coach uh, Sferga always puts together a great team I found out the other day the reason it's called the cliff is because it's built on a cliff so I guess I learned something every day <laughs> you know every school in the in the uh, GPAC has a reputation of shooting the three but when you talk GPAC basketball and shooting the three that for some reason Briarcliff is the one that always comes to mind to me yeah, no, definitely. I mean, coach, like you said, coach Pierre's done a really good job there at Briarcliff. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, when you when you go when you when you go into a game facing Briarcliff, you know you're gonna have to guard the three because you know they're gonna get up. I mean, uh, close to twenty attempts, if not more than that, every game. Um, obviously, that's obviously that's a big emphasis for them, um, and, and it's been, I mean, a, a key to their success over the last last few years. So, yeah, just coach Pierre's done a really good job. I mean. Um, I think they're one of the dark horses um, in the conference this year. They returned basically everybody from last year. They were pretty young last year, but they got a lot of those young guys got a lot of experience last year playing. I think that, I think they'll be they'll be really solid this year again. So you know, Brevin, listen to this. This is uh, Briarcliffs. I think these are going to be their starters. Uh, Quinn, I think it's Vasey, forty last season, forty three percent from three. Connor Groves, forty one percent from three. Nick Hoyt, forty percent from three, and then uh, Quentin Vess. Uh, 54 percent i mean and 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 all three of those uh groves nick hoyt and uh vesa all have a two to one assist to turnover ratio so these guys can shoot they're going to take care of the ball i mean you, you've got to play you got to whatever they're picked in the conference you got to play a good game to beat briarcliff don't you no yeah definitely i mean you have to you have to go into those games um with their defense on point because like, like you said obviously they shoot it really well they're going to put five guys out there that can that can shoot it they can handle it that obviously makes it makes it really hard on your defense, but it's yeah, it's obviously it's really nice when you have one through five able to shoot three um, as, yeah. as effectively as they as they as they can. So, is that another tough place? That place looks tough on video. Is that another tough place to play? Yeah, no, that's that's another place that, that have really good crowds. Um, their student section is always really engaged with games and stuff. So yeah, that's another. I mean, all, all across the board throughout the conference. I mean, it's it's they're always going to be tough when on the road. So that brings us to seventh pick in the conference we've been talking all the way through on tough places to play dort no matter who i talk to dort is in the top four or five in the entire country i i'm not really 100 percent sure i talked to uh a couple of guys and they say it's just the student section but there's got to be something special there because everybody brings up dort when you talk about this is a tough place to play yeah no definitely it's another another one of those tough spots to play in the conference um like you said, the student section is always always really involved in the game. I mean, they're always heckling players. Um, their 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 community support is really good as well. And just, I mean, the the, the the arena it's kind of a cool. It's kind of like a it almost like you're walking into a barn. It's kind of a barn shaped deal. The 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 ceiling's kind of lower, so it's really. I mean, it, it gets really loud in there, and the fans are always super engaged. So yeah, definitely, it's another one of those tough places to play. 
um, within the conference. You know, they they did really well. They lost that overtime game to William Penn. They really showed well this weekend that Luke Rankin, he's out of Grimes, Iowa. He's a freshman. Of course, he didn't score. He scored 30, but he didn't do it the second night. You know, welcome to college basketball. You're not going to do that <laughs> twice. But, uh, yeah. you know, they've got they've got some players no, definitely. I mean, they're always they're always super super talented, um, but they're another one of those teams that just will kind of kind of grind grind you out. Um, just, they play super physical, play play really well on defense, take care of the basketball. Um, they they just play play solid fundamental basketball, and obviously that makes it makes them tough to beat. Okay, that brings us up to to Midland. We're getting down near the bottom half of the coaches' poll, where typically in a lot of conferences you don't you you consider not. You know, these aren't teams we really have to worry about, but this is the G Pack, another tough team. And when we took a look at uh, Midland, they've got four or five starters coming back. So, uh, Sanquist, he's a senior. Emmanuel Bryson, he's also a senior. Uh, Jake Rushoff, he's a junior this year. I mean, these guys all played, well, they all started. Uh, Emma, Bryce, Emmanuel Bryson, he was a part time starter. And Toshota, he's only a sophomore. So as a, as a freshman, well, I guess he's re- repeating his sophomore year, but he he started all but one game. Here they are. They're picked. What is it? Eighth in the conference, and they're returning almost their entire squad. Definitely not a night off. No, definitely. I mean, like you said, I mean, when you, when you return that many guys, um, obviously you're going to bring back a pretty good, pretty good squad. But like you said, they're 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 going to be another tough team. One a team that was picked towards the bottom of the conference, but I think will will give teams a lot of fits. I mean, when, when you return that many guys, a guy like. Lawrence Merritt, Bo Sanquist, those guys are super talented. So I, I'm, I'm sure they're they're wanting to make some noise this year as well, too. Pick ninth in the conference was Doan. And I, I'm a stats guy. This is an amazing – you know, we're talking about all these teams having everybody coming back, mainly because of the COVID exemption. But if you look at Doan, they're picked third to last. 75% of their minutes played last year were played by seniors who are back. Think about that for a moment. That's how much experience seniors, if you add everybody who played last year, they've got 80% of all minutes back returning. So they're going to be very experienced. I know they've struggled in the past. These guys have logged a lot of minutes in the G pack and they're picked near the bottom of the conference. It doesn't matter if it's division one, division two, NAI, D3, whenever you have experience in college basketball, that goes a long way. And obviously, as you mentioned, I mean, don't has a lot, a lot of, a lot of guys coming back that played or have played a lot of minutes throughout the years. Um, I know Coach McKeithen's really excited about some of the, the freshmen they brought in um, to go along with those returners. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see see what Duncan can do this year as well. Anthony Lavari, Larrabee. Larrabee. I apologize to him. And Jay, uh, Jackson Hare, they both averaged in uh, double digits, you know, five rebounds a game. Seniors that are back, lots of experience along with Joe Burt, uh, Trey Winkler, Ben Moxness, I I think you're definitely right. You know I've watched NAI basketball all my all my life, and there is nothing to replace going through the conference in a in a real year, not a year where you're playing scrimmages like last year. <laughs> You've got to know what it feels like. You know out here in the West, it's like you know what does it feel like to walk into College of Idaho? What does it feel like to walk into Northwest University? And there's just there's nothing that can replace that experience, is there? No, definitely. I mean, like like you said, this last year with COVID, I mean, it was it was kind of up in the air. I mean, there's some some facilities that would allow fans and everything, but now, I mean, this year it'll be nice to have all all fans um able to co- come to games, and I mean that, that makes a big difference if you're if you're used to playing in front of big crowds or or empty gyms. So obviously having that experience um, helps. So Brevin, your regular nights to play in the G Pack or what? How many days separate your games? So once conference starts, we will play on Wednesday nights and then Saturday afternoons. So typically Wednesday nights at eight eight o'clock, Saturday afternoons at like four. So if you travel on Wednesday, you try to travel home on Wednesday night. Is that the way you guys travel? Yeah, typically, typically. So that gives you a couple of days to get ready for the next game. Correct. In the Cascade, I think it's one of the few conferences, but it's always back to back, which offers okay. its yep. its own challenges, right? Yeah, no, definitely. No, that's like obviously it's nice having those. Having those couple of days in between, I mean, it gives your your guys um, time to recover, and obviously, it's nice on coaches. Um, it allows us to have time to scout teams and stuff, um, just for preparation in between games. is obviously really beneficial. How hard do you push guys physically, like between Wednesday and Saturday? Because you got to keep them sharp, right? But definitely, I think I mean it kind of depends on 
part of the season we're in, obviously the beginning of the year might might go a little bit harder. Towards the end of the year might back off a little bit, but obviously there's a there's a fine balance between giving guys rest but also wanting to stay sharp. Yeah, I thought you were gonna say depend on how many turnovers you had. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that probably that probably matters too. Hey, another new coach in the conference this year brings us down to Mount Marty, Colin Othier. He's the new head coach there. Uh, nice guy. I uh, interviewed him the other day. But they've got a quite a few guys have gone. Jalen Billings is gone. Chad Moran, Luke Ronsyke. But they got a lot back too. Tyrell Harper, he's a player, isn't he? That guy can really yeah, rebound. He is. And uh, Elijah Pappas, I think that's going to be those are going to be the key guys that they build around. But they got a, they got Allen Wilson coming back. He's a senior. Cade Stearns, he pretty much started most of the year last year. Uh, and then Jonah Larson, he's a junior. So I know they're picked next to last, but that was a pretty good team last year, and they've got a lot of guys back. Their, their new head coaches um, really excited about their their team. Obviously, um, like you mentioned, those those guys returning. Pat, this is obviously a really, really good player, um, and the, the other guys returning um, that makes a big difference. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see what um, new philosophies they have, kind of the style of play they they, they change to. But, but yeah, they'll they'll definitely. I mean, pick towards the bottom, but I'm sure that they're obviously pretty confident in the team they got, and obviously they'll give give teams throughout the conference problems. So how far is it from Seward, where you guys are? Where's your farthest road trip? Def- definitely Jamestown, probably eight and a half hours. One way? Yep, yep. Holy yeah, it's, cow! It's, 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 it's a long ways. It's a long ways up there. <laughs> yeah, that is a okay. I I didn't know you guys had that long. A, I didn't know you had that that long of a road trip out there. But that's that's by far the farthest one. I mean, everything else. I mean. We got all the in-state schools like Doan, Hastings, Midland. Those are, I mean, hour or less. And then, like, I mean, you got the Iowa schools, Morningside. Those, those, those trips aren't those aren't those trips aren't too bad. So that brings, I'm sorry, that brings us up to Hastings again. In a regular year, you look at a team that's picked last in the conference. They're probably going to struggle. You know, Hastings might. We talk about all these teams having everybody coming back. I don't know if you've looked at their roster. They got a couple of juniors back, uh, Gansbaum and Walker, Deshaun Walker, Hemstra, Jewel, Matley, Matt O'Brien, Shane Chamberlain, Braden Kaiser. They're all gone. I don't know if they've been able to fill the cupboard. I couldn't really tell from the roster. What have you heard about, about Hastings? It just seems like they had a huge turnaround there. Yeah, no, it'll be interesting to see what what – what Ga- Coach Gavers puts out on the floor this year. I mean, you mentioned um, Deshaun Walker and Carson Gansbaum. I mean, those are two two solid players within the league. Um, but basically, after them, I mean, there's kind of the unknown. I mean, I haven't I haven't seen a whole lot on them who they who they brought in. But I'm sure Coach Gavers found some guys some that'll that'll put a pretty good product out there for Hastings. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, it'll be one of those. I've seen a few of these games where you think, oh, we're going to go into this school. There's I don't really see anybody on the roster. They lost everybody. And then you walk in there and you find out, boy, this this transfer and this freshman and, you know, they just pound your brains in. So you, yeah, yeah. you never know till the, I can say, you never know till the ball hits the hardwood. That's right. That's right. So Brevin, you're finishing up, you're a, a graduate assisting. So you're still, you're uh, getting your master's, right? Yep, correct. So I'm in my second year as the graduate assistant at Concordia, um, working on my master's in coaching at athletic administration. Um, and then obviously getting the opportunity to coach um, with Coach Limbeck and Coach Tegmeyer now is really special. So so if you, I don't know if you've thought this far ahead, but are you thinking about trying to go into the public school system and coach? You want to try to get a college coaching or right now are you just finishing up your education and figure that out when it comes? Yeah, I, um, I'm leaning toward if I, if I choose to go to the coaching route, I definitely want to stay stay involved in the college game. Um, I'm, just, I'm just somebody that just appreciates the higher level. I mean, mm-hmm. I give a lot of props to – Give a lot of props to high school coaches um, that enjoy that, but I'm more of a guy that I want to be able to deal with guys that have a have a high high talent um, skill level and stuff. So um, right right now, I want to I want to stay in the college game, but we'll kind of see what see what happens after this year. So when do you think you'll graduate with the masters after this season or this year? Yeah, so this, this spring, this spring. Oh, well, congratulations! Goes according to plan, yeah, thank you, appreciate that. Well, Brevin, I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, hopefully we can do this in about a month again. Then we'll, we should have some real numbers to look at. We'll really see what's going on in the GPAC. We'll be able to put a, you know, put together a much better picture of it. Uh, but today just wanted to go through the teams, give everybody across the country a, a bit of an insight into the GPAC, and I appreciate you helping me do that. 
No, yeah, absolutely. It was always it's always good chat hoops with you. And obviously, like you know, I mean, the G Pack's gonna be really strong again this year. Um, it should it should make for a fun year. But yeah, I, I definitely look forward to catching up later on um, after some some actual games take place. Have you worn your Cascade hoops hat? I, I wear it all the time. I, I got <laughs> pictures to prove it. I got I got pictures to prove it too. So. You got the receipts. That's right. That's right. You're a good man, Mister Slope. Okay, I appreciate that. You hang on, you hang in there. I'm looking forward to see what the Bulldogs can do, and uh, we'll talk later as the season gets underway. Sounds good. Hey, I want to say thank you again to all. I mean, all you do for NAI basketball, just the publicity you do for all the teams throughout the country. It's a it's a big deal, and I know um, coaches and players really appreciate it. So thank you. So hey. Keep keep doing that good work. Oh, thank you very much, Brevin. That means an awful lot to me. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely.